to study the germination of the endospores of bacillus cirrus have been made. The detection of endospores of bacilli using techniques like PCR have also been developed. These are highly valuable in detecting the presence of contaminants which may be endospore formers in products of value including milk and milk products. The process of formation of endospore in bacteria is known as sporulation. It is an extreme survival strategy employed by these bacteria. It is used as an ultimate response and as a last resort for survival. It is a complex developmental process that occurs when bacteria sense and adapt to changes in the environment. The actual trigger may vary with different species. Example given, in bacillus species and certain clostridium species, nutrient starvation triggers the endospore formation. More specifically, if we talk about clostridium perfringens undergoes the process of sporulation in nutrient deprivation like inorganic phosphates. In case of clostridium cellulolyticum, cellobiose starvation leads to the process of sporulation. Next. Once they sense the environmental trigger, they undergo many genetically directed changes. For sporulation to occur, it is very much necessary that the proteins which are involved in the vegetative cell function be seized and the spore specific proteins be synthesized. This is accomplished by endospore specific genes. More than 200 such genes are utilized for the production of a spore, but they need to be activated. The major signal transduction pathway for the initiation of sporulation is a phosphorylase system which phosphorylates the spore OA factor and thus activating its function. The spore OA is the main transcriptional regulator which controls the transcription of many hundred genes which are responsible for the process of sporulation. The transfer of phosphorus to spore OA is not attained directly but instead it is regulated by a complex network of interactions. The signal input into the phosphorylase system occurs by the action of kinases back by the action of kinases to phosphorylate a secondary messenger protein that is spore OF. Spore OF serves as a substrate for phosphorylation of spore A via spore OB which is a phosphotransferase. Once the spore OA is phosphorylated, it activates a number of spore specific genes which are required for the translation of the proteins involved in the process of sporulation. Collectively, these genes are known as spore genes. Besides this, the phosphorylated spore OA also activates many sigma factors like sigma factor F, sigma factor G. Many other sigma factors are under the control of this sigma F which needs to be activated. One such example is the activation of the sigma E, this which you can see on the slide. Sigma F binds with the RNA polymerase and it transcribes the spore to R gene, which leads to the translation of that spore to R gene for production of spore to R protein. This spore to R protein is a protease which cleaves apart the N-terminal inhibitory peptide chain of pro sigma E which and thereby activating it to sigma E. This sigma E initiates the transcription of the target genes which leads to the synthesis of many proteins that catalyze series of events for leading to the moist metabolizing vegetative cell to a relatively dry, dormant but yet resistant endospore. Next slide. Let us now see the process of sporulation in bacillus subtilis. Why bacillus subtilis? Perhaps because it is the best studied endospore forming bacteria as far as its biochemistry, its genetics and physiology is concerned. It has been used as a model system for studying the cell fate and development since decades. Its main advantages practically are its extreme powerful genetics and its tractability to the applications of cell biological methods. 
and therefore perhaps it is used as a powerful system in studying the basic mechanism of sporulation next in its natural environment soil bacillus subtilis always frequently faces nutrient starvation and it adapts many survival strategies to face this it includes motility chemotaxis which are responsible for reaching to the nutrients besides it it expresses transport systems and induces catabolic pathways just to take up and metabolize second resources of the nutrients besides this it also produces certain toxins antibiotics and degradative enzymes to suppress the competition by killing the neighboring prokaryotes and eukaryotic cells and thereby gaining the access to the nutrients these nutrient deprived cells only become committed to the process of sporulation if these adaptive response fail to provide enough nutrients to support their growth and that is the reason why sporulation is used as a last resort perhaps because it is a very long and energy consuming process which utilizes many of its pre-existing metabolites like rna proteins and of course its tca cycle it takes in case of bacillus subtilis it takes 8 to 15 hours to complete this process typically one spore is formed per vegetative cell in response to nutrient deprivation and a high population density bacillus subtilis undergoes a wide variety of structural and biochemical changes which is as shown in the slide it is it is divided into seven different stages from stage 0 to 7 stage for the ease of explanation these stages can be further divided into early stages of sporulation middle stages of sporulation and the later stages of sporulation as you can see on the slide during the early stages of endospore formation the initially the in the stage 0 a vegetative cell undergoes its exponential cell division and contains two nuclear bodies in the next stage these two nuclear bodies condense to form an exile filament of chromatin this is the very first sign of sporulation in the next stage that is stage 2 as you can see on the slide unusual asymmetric cell division occurs this unusual asymmetric cell division leads to the cytoplasmic invagination of the spore at one pole and which separates the cytoplasm of the smaller cell as you can see on the slide from the rest of its cell component which is the mother cell this smaller cell is destined to become an endospore which is also called a pre-spore in certain organisms in certain endospore forming organisms which are cocci like sporosarcina these organisms lack this asymmetric cell division mechanisms but yet they still form an endospore using the same general systems and mechanisms in the next stage that is the middle stage middle stage in the middle stage the cells the smaller cell as you can see again an unusual mechanism is observed that is a mechanism of phagocytosis the smaller cell is being completely engulfed within the larger cell and this cell which is engulfed within this larger cell is known as a four spore this fourth spore is a protoplast whose inner part is called the core. It is enclosed by two concentric sets of unit membrane. One is its own bounding membrane and the other is the membrane of the mother cell that surrounds it. In the next stage, the cortex develops between the two membranes surrounding the fourth spore. The inner membrane and the outer membranes are the dense layers. In some cases, example given Bacillus serous and Bacillus anthracis, an additional looser and thinner layer forms outside this cortex which is known as exosporium, which consists of lipids and proteins with low cysteine and methionine. It is during this stage that is cortex formation 
the cell the, the endospore undergoes dehydration and it is during this stage that calcium is incorporated from the mother cell into the spore besides this the production of sasps and dipyclonic acid occurs in the mother cell and is incorporated into the spore in the later stages as you can see on the slide a multi layer spore coat is formed outside the cortex once the coat is synthesized the spore starts attaining maturation it becomes more dehydrated more refractile and more resistant in nature the secret of success of an endospore formation lies in the altruistic behavior of the mother cell which utilizes all of its resources to endow the endospore with the resources particularly its protective layers and thereby maximizing the chances of the survival of a mature spore and ultimately the mature spore is released by lysing the mother cell as a free spore and this spore which is released is highly dormant dehydrated re re resistant and refractile in nature next slide so we can say that an endospore formation is a mechanism of survival rather than a mechanism of reproduction then a question arises what enables their survival in this extremities of their life and the answer to this lies in their resistance towards different environmental assaults again a question arises what enables the resistance then and again the question the answer to this question is in their chemical composition which lies in their different cellular components so we can say that endospore chemistry and resistance are interlinked resistance is multifactorial and cannot be accounted for by any single parameter the resilience of an endospore can be explained in part by its unique cellular components that is its coat cortex and the core so we just begin our explanation with the spore coat it is the outermost multi layered structure of an endospore which comprises 30 to 60% of the dry weight of the spore it is made up of different types of proteins more than 2 dozen different proteins are involved in its construction which constitutes 80% of the total spore protein these proteins have unusually high amount of cysteine and hydrophobic amino acids these proteins are cross linked by covalent bonds like disulfide bridges ditryosin bridges transglutamine bridges etc because of this cross linking the spore coat becomes much more insoluble and thereby it becomes more resistant it provides resistance to the spore against various enzymes like proteases it also makes the spore more resistance toward resistant towards chemicals like aldehydes uh halogens etc perhaps the mechanism that accounts for this resistance includes its impermeability the spore cortex is the layer which is present outside the spore coat it is a thicker layer which is made up of specialized peptidoglycan it consists of two layers one is its inner membrane and the outer membrane the inner membrane is much more denser and is very much similar in structure to the vegetative cell wall it is also known as the germ cell wall it provides a permeability towards various agents like chemicals the structure of the inner membrane of the cortex is very similar to the vegetative cell wall which you can see on the slide the outer layer or the outer membrane of the spore cortex is a thicker layer which consists of modified peptidoglycan the previous slide please the thicker and the modified peptidoglycan it consists of two modifications the previous one yes it consists of two modifications 50% of the muramic acid of the vegetative cell wall is converted to muramic beta lactam another modification that is observed is that less cross linking is observed in this peptidoglycan 
which is which involves 3% cross linking as compared to 40% in the vegetative cell both these modifications help in the easier outgrowth during the later stages but as such they act as a static structure that maintains the dehydrated form of a spore its unique structure includes three repeating n acetyl glucosamine muramic acid dimer differing with respect to substitutions on the lactic acid moiety these substitutions as you can see on the slide that is a muramic acid lactam 20 pipe 50% of which is without amino acid 25% has an alanine subunit attached to it and the rest 25 has a tetrapeptide subunit with the sequence of amino acids like l alanine d glutamine diaminopimelic acid d alanine respectively a very interesting feature of the cortex peptidoglycan structure is that though the vegetative cells of both bacillus subtilis and bacillus fericus have different types of peptidoglycans but yet they synthesize essentially the same peptidoglycan structure in the cortex suggesting the distinctive role of the peptidoglycan structure in the cortex it is believed that proper cortex formation is needed for dehydration and cortex osmotically removes the water from the inner part of the spore thus contributing to heat resistance of the spore the next slide the innermost part of the spore is the spore core which exists in a very dehydrated condition the spore core is also called a protoplast it consists of 10 to 25 percent of the water of the vegetative cell it houses core wall cytoplasmic membrane nucleoid ribosomes and certain cellular essentials like low energy molecules the major features besides this that contribute to the spore resistance are that the spore cytoplasm that is the core is one unit pH less than the vegetative cell it also possess small acid soluble proteins calciums dipiclonic acid and more essentially the low water content the spore cytoplasm as it is one unit less in pH confers the spore as its survival the next one small acid soluble proteins which are found in the spores 